Bubba Wallace signs an extension. Is this the right move for 2311? And does this say anything about their ongoing charter disagreement? How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. I can finally breathe through my nose again. I've been sounding like Squidward the past few days. Thank you for bearing with me. We've got some big news to react to. Also, Thad Moffat, truck series driver, joins us in the second half. Always fun to catch up with him. But first things first, yesterday, 2311 Racing announced that driver Bubba Wallace has signed a multi-year extension with the team. No additional details were given out. I'm not even sure if a press release was officially published. Uh, reporter Jordan Bianchi notes this is a two-year extension specifically, so maybe that's worth noting. Uh, but at first glance, this is a no-brainer. Of course, Bubba Wallace and 2311 were going to stick together. Look, Bubba Wallace has proven himself to be at least a solid driver who attracts major corporate sponsorship. Huge companies, huge brands like McDonald's, Columbia, Dr. Pepper, and others have thrown their support behind him. Michael Jordan is here because of Bubba Wallace. Sure, he's always liked NASCAR. Sure, he signed off on Tyler Reddick, and I'm sure he's thrilled with those results so far. But Bubba Wallace was the driver Michael Jordan was convinced he could build a business around. As far as the on-track results go, there is room to criticize. We'll get to that in a moment, but... At first glance, it's clear to anyone that Bubba Wallace has improved every single year. Year one, with 2311, he wins a rain-shortened race at Talladega. Okay, year two, he wins a legitimate intermediate race at Kansas. Year three, he makes the driver's playoffs, career best average finish. And in year four, he's on pace to set new career highs and top tens, top fives. Little by little, Bubba Wallace and the 23 team are getting better year after year. Not surprising at all that they would sign Bubba to a multi multi-year extension. Now the question is, will the rest of the team stay the same? Although they've shown improvement, the number 23 team missed the playoffs this year while their teammate in the 45 won the regular season championship. So clearly there is room to improve. Look at the pit crew. Every metric I've seen on every site that tracks this sort of stuff suggests that Bubba Wallace's pit crew is not among the best in the business. 2311 has been hiring, training, developing their own pit crews for a couple of years now. There's still some work to be done. What about Booty Barker, the crew chief? I am in no position to question this man's credentials. He has been in this sport competing at a high level for decades. But maybe this specific pairing has run its course. I'm hesitant to make any rash decisions because again, as a unit, the 23 team is getting a little bit better every single season. But the fact that they are still noticeably behind the 45 team tells me there's room for improvement, which is why I'm asking these tough questions. See, I don't follow every lap Bubba Wallace turns. I'm not closely tracking every strategy call. I'm watching the whole race. I'm watching 40 cars, dozens of storylines every weekend. Hardcore Bubba Wallace fans are paying close attention to every move the 23 team makes. I'm not capable of doing that. But I can speak to several specific moments this season that did jump out at me. Really, Darlington. The Southern 500 a few weeks ago, that race sticks out in my head. That was the final race of the regular season. Bubba Wallace entered that weekend, locked in a tight battle for the final playoff position on points. The weekend started off strong. They unloaded fast. Bubba sat on the pole. Incredible. Then the race. Larson leapfrogged them during a cycle of green flag pit stops, but Bubba still finished second in the opening stage. Not bad. Then the wheels began to fall off in stage two. Bubba Wallace complained that the car was too tight as he would lose a few positions. Positions, air would get dirtier, car would plow even more. Bubba dropped from second to ninth by the end of stage two. Then the team waited to make their green flag pit stop in stage three, and that long run strategy seemed to work out. He was ninth when the cycle began, but after a while worked his way up to seventh. Net gain, unfortunately, at that moment, he was still several points below the cut line, especially with a new winner threatening to spoil everything. It was the decision then with about 40 laps to go. Booty Barker left Bubba Wallace on the racetrack, roughly in seventh position, while many behind him pit for fresh tires. On the restart, Bubba was a sitting duck. Car was still tight. He was in dirty air. Fresher tires swallowed him up. He fell out of the top 10. Then they pitted during the caution with about 30 laps to go, but at that that point the damage was done they'd lost their track position and got caught up in a big crash effectively ending their playoff 
hopes. I feel that Darlington race highlighted many of the problems this team faced all season long. Take out specific races where they got, you know, turned by Bowman at Chicago or spun by Gregson at New Hampshire. They start the weekend with a ton of speed, don't always keep up with changes, and then usually there's a, a questionable pit call or a mistake on pit road that gets them into some trouble. Obviously, it's not every week, but that seemed like a common storyline. Which is why I asked the question. The driver obviously is not going anywhere. The pit crew, they're going to keep working. They're going to keep trying to improve. My attention turns to the crew chief. Again, this group is getting a little bit better every single year, so I'm hesitant to make any big, bold changes. But if there is a clear-cut, qualified candidate available, I would consider making the change. This late in the year, such candidate probably does not exist, so I would expect Booty Barker and Bubba to run it back in 2025, but I would absolutely keep them on a short leash. Bubba Wallace is a solid driver. I think Booty Barker is a solid crew chief. But Tyler Reddick and Billy Scott have shattered expectations this year. The 23 team needs to be closer to the 45. What do you change? How do you get there? That's the question. Now, real quick, what does this move say about the ongoing charter negotiations? Remember, 2311 was one of only two teams to not sign NASCAR's latest proposal. They risk losing their charters at the end of this season. Remember, two weeks ago, Bubba Wallace didn't have a deal done and sounded frustrated. He said this, quote, My process has been kind of going hand in hand with the charter agreement. It's frustrating to see where we're at because that impacts my life and livelihood and everything moving forward for my future. So the fact that he signed an extension, finally, does that suggest that 2311 is going to sign or has already signed NASCAR's proposal? Are negotiations suddenly working in a more positive direction for the team? Or is this just 2311 trying to show the world that they're team players? We want to be here. We're signing our driver long term. We're committed to the sport. Are they trying to play up that narrative before they try to take NASCAR to court? Could that be a possibility? I don't know. That's purely speculation. Maybe Bubba Wallace was just forced to accept a less than stellar deal. Maybe there's less guarantees in this contract. Maybe there's wording around if or if not 2311 has charters next year because having a charter dramatically increases the amount of purse money NASCAR pays out to you at the end of the season. If 2311 races without charters next year, that is a huge hit to their bottom line. They may not be able to afford to pay Bubba Wallace what he wants. So that's also possible. Maybe this has nothing to do with the charter agreement Bubba just took less money or less guarantees. It's all speculation. I was trying to dig into it over the past 24 hours, but we really don't know. Nobody really knows what's going to happen next still. But it is interesting that the team has finally agreed to an extension with their driver, Bubba Wallace. Anyway, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. I want to bring in Thad Moffat, friend of the show. We talked recently about the 75th anniversary of the Petties in NASCAR. Been a huge celebration this year that he's been a part of. We also talked about the struggles this year. Many of you know of Faction 46. They started the year off with Nice Motorsports. Financial struggles, disagreements internally. Thad ultimately went to to Young's Motorsports, where he's been racing since. It's been a tumultuous rookie year for Thad. Wanted to talk to him about how difficult that's been to navigate, what he's learned. I also want to give a shout out to Centromatic Wheel Balancers for helping make this interview possible. Click the link down below to learn more. Their wheel balancers will keep your trucks, tires, and assembly components lasting as long as possible. Again, find your balance at Centromatic.com. Link in the description below. Let's bring on Thad Moffitt. Thad is it's been a while. Good to see you, man. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. It's good to see you. Uh, it has been a little while. Last time we were playing around at the zoo and stuff. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's a little different setting this time, but uh, it's always fun to catch up with you. Yeah, that was a good time. That was an awesome time. But now the summer months are winding down. Fall is pretty much here. Uh, it's been a special year for the entire Petty family. Of course, 75th anniversary. In fact, uh, you are continuing that legacy on the racetrack. But it's been cool to see every track pretty much every week unveiling one of the new, you know, their own you know, Richard Petty hat sort of uh, monument, if you will. So I guess my first question to you, Thad, and I'm sure you've been asked this question many times this year, but what it, what does it mean to be able to continue the petty racing legacy yeah i mean it's it's a huge honor for me and i i really have to give props to nascar and the tracks for being so interactive with this i mean they have 
Uh, every track has done uh, a hat pretty much so far, and it's been an unveil, and it's been a big deal, and a big deal for my family. Uh, not only Richard and Kyle, but even Maurice's kids have got to attend a couple of them. Uh, so, yeah, it's been great to have the entire Petty family come together this year around the 75 years of Petties in, in racing. And uh, for me to be the one still driving has been really, really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, let's talk about driving a bit now. Uh, first full season in the NASCAR Truck Series. What would you say, what, what's the biggest thing you've learned so far? Yeah, it's a lot different than, uh, than ARCA or the Trans Am stuff that I did before. Uh, it's definitely a high level of competition. And um, yeah, there's a lot I, I've learned so far. Qualifying is a lot more important in the trucks. I mean, you see that uh, every week. You know, I mean, it's really hard to pass in those things and uh, at certain racetracks. And, um, yeah, it's just been a big learning curve for me. A lot more competitive cars, uh, a lot different style of racing. We've been to some new racetracks for me. I mean, a lot of them really has been my first time uh, racing there. So it's been cool to go visit some new places and uh, be able to learn from the guys who are really good in the truck series. Yeah, like the truck series, the the competition, especially the last few years, has been very equal. Like the equipment itself, I feel like is pretty even. Obviously, there's teams that are faster than others, but like as a result, the fields are tight. It's harder to pass. That was going to be my next question. Maybe you kind of answered it. Was what's the most surprising thing um, that you found in your first truck series season? Yeah, I think the level of competition and how there's like no, I would say there's no bad trucks in the field. Like. I mean, like it's it's a lot different than it used to be. A couple of years ago, you'd find several of them that were like seconds off the pace, you know. And now yeah. it's it's now it's pretty close, all the way through the field. And uh, um, I mean, obviously, a couple guys have been good every week, like Christian and Corey. Uh, sure. But like you said, I mean, there's not really been like one dominant organization. I would say McAnally's been good. Uh, Tricon's been really good. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely an eye opener to have that level of competition and, and how stiff it is and how there's so many good trucks. Yeah. I think you put it best that there's, there's not many bad trucks. Like there are still yeah. a few that are the best, maybe drivers who have a few years of experience, but there's also, there's just nobody really bringing up the rear of the field week in, week out. Um, I did want to ask you, I did hear that you, that you hurt your foot recently. I don't know if you want to talk about that, but what, what was the story there? So it, it like it didn't get hurt necessarily. It got burnt. Uh, oh, okay. So we wear those. We we wear wear those little uh, booties on mm -hmm. our heels. And we went to Milwaukee, and uh, mine were not in my driver bag. So I raced without them. And Milwaukee was extremely hot. So I uh, actually blistered my heel pretty bad. And trying to recover from that before uh, Bristol here in a couple of weeks. It's still open and covered with an ace bandage so uh hopefully we can get that get some skin to grow back here in the next couple of weeks Oof. <laughs> yeah that's uh that sounds pretty gnarly man well hope you're doing all right hope it gets better uh quickly um one of my final questions for you thad i know this season has been tough just being a rookie in the truck series like you said going to a lot of tracks for the first time minimal practice hard to get reps but i also know it's been sort of tumultuous behind the scenes started the year with faction and nice faction being a brand new team and now you've kind of moved over to young's motorsports like i guess how difficult has all of that been to, been to manage for a young driver like yourself yeah i mean that's a that's a good question because it's been really hard right it's been like there was weeks where i didn't know when my next race was or if and i i thought that i was going to be full-time in the truck series this year and then two weeks before pocono we didn't know who we were racing with or where we were racing you know and tyler uh tyler luckily has gotten us through these last handful of races and uh, kept it going so it's been great to get over there to tyler's group and um, be able to continue racing i mean that's that's really important for me this year is just being able to be there and run all the laps and and just learn everything I can learn uh, just for the future. And yeah, it's definitely difficult going from what I had went to over at, at Nice and um, how it was going over there and then over to Tyler's and missing the race at Nashville was not any fun. Uh, but I'm just lucky to still be out there and still be racing. Um, it's definitely been challenging on and off the track to keep everything going. But uh, here we are and we're still racing. So we kind of got that uh, never quit 
in us and um, just keep digging. Yeah, that's great. No, it's important for a young driver to just make laps, get this experience, visit these tracks for the first time. And um, yeah, so far, so good. Despite despite so much adversity, you guys have uh, pretty much checked that box this season. So that's been good to see. It's been really good to get to know you uh, off the track this year, Thad. One of the things we got to do earlier this spring was visit uh, your partner, Centromatic Wheel Balancers here actually in Texas. They actually only about an hour away from where I live here. Uh, really cool place, family-owned business. How how important has their support been uh, to you this year? Yeah, so I really enjoyed going down there and seeing their operation, man. It really uh, made me think of our operation here at Petty's Garage. It was really family oriented. Mm. Uh, they had an employee who had been with them since basically the start that was still there. And uh, so that was really cool to just see their process and building the wheel balancers. And then they had a, a couple people come out to the racetrack and support there in Texas. Uh, so yes, it was really cool getting to know those guys and see their operations day to day. And they've definitely been a big supporter of mine this year. So, uh, look forward to a long future with those guys. Yeah, no, they were awesome. It was great to see multiple generations working there. Folks who had married into the family, taking on a huge role and they make a great product as well. So uh, it was fun to visit Centromatic, uh, earlier this year with you, Thad. It's been awesome talking to you today. Really appreciate your time and good luck the rest of this season, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Eric. Thanks again to Thad for coming on the show. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe for more NASCAR content and conversation every single day. And a big thank you to my very generous Patreon supporters as always. More coming out this week. Got a Bristol preview coming out tomorrow, but there's plenty of racing happening between now and then. Arca and Trucks tonight, Xfinity tomorrow, Cup of course Saturday. One of my favorite weekends of the year. Can't wait to talk all things Bristol. Have a good one, y'all. Take care. I'll see you in the next episode.